Session 41 Origins and Related Words 1. People are the craziest animals bovine, placid like a cow, stolid, patient, unexcitable, is built on the Latin word for ox or cow, bovis, plus the suffix ine, like, similar to, or characteristic of. To call someone bovine is of course far from complimentary, for this adjective is considerably stronger than phlegmatic, and implies a certain mild contempt on the part of the speaker. A bovine person is somewhat like a vegetable, eats and grows in lives, but apparently is lacking in any strong feelings. Humans are sometimes compared to animals, as in the following adjectives, 1. Leonine, like a lion in appearance or temperament. 2. Canine, like a dog. As a noun, the word refers to the species to which dogs belong. Our canine teeth are similar to those of a dog. 3. Feline, cat-like. We may speak of feline grace, or, insultingly, of feline temperament when we mean that a person is catty. 4. Porcine, pig-like. 5. Vulpine, fox-like in appearance or temperament. When applied to people, this adjective usually indicates the shrewdness of a fox. 6. Ursine, bear-like. 7. Lupin, wolf-like. 8. Equine, horse-like, horsey. 9. Piscine, fish-like. All these adjectives come from the corresponding Latin words for the animals, and, of course, each adjective also describes, or refers to, the specific animal as well as to the person likened to the animal. 1. Leo Lion 2. Canis Dog 3. Felis Cat 4. Porcus Pig 5. Vulpus Fox 6. Ursus Bear 7. Lupus Wolf 8. Equus Horse 9. Piscus Fish The word for meat from a pig, pork, derives, obviously, from porcus. Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, the Great Bear and the Little Bear, the two conspicuous groups of stars in the northern sky, conspicuous, of course, only on a clear night, are so labeled because in formation they resemble the outlines of bears. The feminine name Ursula is, by etymology, a little bear, which, perhaps, is a strange name to burden a child with. The skin disease lupus was so named because it eats into the flesh, as a wolf might. 2. You can't go home again nostalgia built on two Greek roots, nostos, a return, and algos, pain, as in neuralgia, cardialgia, etc., is a feeling you can't ever understand until you've experienced it, and you have probably experienced it whenever some external stimulus has crowded your mind with scenes from an earlier day. You know how life often seems much pleasanter in retrospect? Your conscious memory tends to store up the pleasant experiences of the past, the trauma and unpleasant experiences may get buried in the unconscious, and when you are lonely or unhappy you may begin to relive these pleasant occurrences. It is then that you feel the emotional pain and longing that we call nostalgia. The adjective is nostalgic, as in motion pictures that are nostalgic of the 50s, or as in, he feels nostalgic whenever he passes 138th Street and sees the house in which he grew up. 3. Soundings cacophony is itself a harsh-sounding word, and is the only one that exactly describes the unmusical, grating, ear-offending noises you are likely to hear in man-made surroundings, the New York subway trains thundering through their tunnels, they are also, these days in the late 1970s, eye-offending, for which we might coin the term cacopsis, noun, and cacoptic, adjective, the traffic bedlam of rush hours in a big city, a steel mill, an automobile factory, a blast furnace, etc. Adjective, cacophonous. These words are built on the Greek roots, cacus, bad, harsh, or ugly, and phone, sound. Phone, sound, is found also in, 1, telephone, etymologically, sound from afar, 2. Euphony, pleasant sound, 3. Phonograph, etymologically, writer of sound 4. Saxophone, a musical instrument, hence sound, invented by Adolf Sax 5. Xylophone, a musical instrument, etymologically, sounds through wood, Greek xylon, wood, 6. Phonetics, the science of the sounds of language, the adjective is phonetic, the expert a phonetician 7. Phonics, the science of sound, also the method of teaching reading by drilling the sounds of letters and syllables. 4. 
the flesh and all carnivorous combines, carnus, flesh, and varro, to devour. A carnivorous animal, or carnivore, is one whose main diet is meat. Varro, to devour, is the origin of other words referring to eating habits, 1. Herbivorous, subsisting on grains, grasses, and other vegetation, as cows, deer, horses, etc. The animal is a herbivore. Derivation, Latin herba, herb, plus varro, to devour too. Omnivorous, eating everything, meat, grains, grasses, fish, insects, and anything else digestible. The only species so indiscriminate in their diet are humans and rats, plus, of course, some cats and dogs that live with people, in contrast to felines and canines, lions, tigers, bobcats, wolves, etc., that are not domesticated. Omnivorous, combining Latin omnis, all, with varro, plus the adjective suffix us, refers not only to food. An omnivorous reader reads everything in great quantities, that is, devours all kinds of reading matter. 3. Voracious, devouring, hence, greedy or gluttonous, may refer either to food or to any other habits. One may be a voracious eater, voracious reader, voracious in one's pursuit of money, pleasure, etc. Think of the two noun forms of loquacious. Can you write two nouns derived from voracious? 5. Omnis Latin omnis, all, is the origin of, 1. Omnipotent, all-powerful, an adjective usually applied to God, also, to any ruler whose governing powers are unlimited, which allows for some exaggeration, as King Canute the Great proved to his sycophantic courtiers when he ordered the tide to come so far up the beach and no further. He got soaking wet. Omnis plus Latin potens, potentus, powerful, as in potentate, a powerful ruler, impotent, powerless, potent, powerful, and potential, possessing power or ability not yet exercised. Can you write the noun form of omnipotent? 2. Omniscient, all-knowing, hence, infinitely wise. Omnis plus sciences, knowing. We have discussed this adjective in a previous chapter, so you will have no problem writing the noun. 3. Omnipresent, present in all places at once. Fear was omnipresent in Europe during 1939, just before World War II. A synonym of omnipresent is ubiquitous, from Latin ubique, everywhere. The ubiquitous ice cream vendor seems to be everywhere at the same time, tinkling those little bells, once spring arrives. The ubiquitous little red wagon rides around everywhere in airports to refuel departing planes. Ubiquitous laughter greeted the press secretary's remark, i.e., laughter was heard everywhere in the room. The noun forms are ubiquity or, can you think of the alternate form? 4. Omnibus, etymologically, for all, including all. In the shortened form bus, we have a public vehicle, for all who can pay, in a John Galsworthy omnibus, we have a book, containing all of Galsworthy's works. In an omnibus legislative bill we have a bill containing all the miscellaneous provisions and appropriations left out of other bills. 6. More flesh note how carnus, flesh, is the building block of, 1. Carnelian, a reddish color, the color of red flesh. 2. Carnival, originally the season of merrymaking just before Lent, when people took a last fling before saying, carn veil. O oh flesh, farewell. Latin veil, farewell, goodbye. Today a carnival is a kind of outdoor entertainment with games, rides, sideshows, and, of course, lots of food, also any exuberant or riotous merrymaking or festivities. 3. Carnal, most often found in phrases like carnal pleasures or carnal appetites, and signifying pleasures or appetites of the flesh rather than of the spirit, hence, sensual, lecherous, lascivious, lubricious, etc. The noun is carnality. 4. Carnage, great destruction of life, that is, of human flesh, as in war or mass murders. 5. Reincarnation, a rebirth or reappearance. Believers in reincarnation maintain that one's soul persists after it has fled the flesh and eventually reappears in the body of a newborn infant or animal, or in another form. Some of us, according to this interesting philosophy, were once Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Cleopatra, etc. The verb is to reincarnate, to bring, a soul, 
back in another bodily form. 6. Incarnate, in the flesh. If we use this adjective to call someone the devil incarnate, we mean that here is the devil in the flesh. Or we may say that someone is evil incarnate, that is, the personification of evil, evil, invested with human or bodily form. The verb to incarnate is to embody, give bodily form to, or make real. 7. Dark secrets clandestine comes from Latin clam, secretly, and implies secrecy or concealment in the working out of a plan that is dangerous or illegal. Clandestine is a close synonym of surreptitious, which means stealthy, sneaky, furtive, generally because of fear of detection. The two words cannot always, however, be used interchangeably. We may speak of either clandestine or surreptitious meetings or arrangements, but usually only of clandestine plans and only of surreptitious movements or actions. Can you write the noun form of surreptitious? Review of etymology prefix, root, suffix meaning one. INE like, similar to, characteristic of two. Leo Lion 3. Felis Cat 4. Porcus Pig 5. Canis Dog 6. Vulpus Fox 7. Ursus Bear 8. Lupus Wolf 9. Equus Horse 10. Piscus Fish 11. Nostoza Return 12. Algos Pain 13. Icy Adjective Suffix 14. Cacus, bad, harsh, ugly 15. Phone sound 16. Xylanwood 17. Carnus flesh 18. Varro, to devour 19. Herba herb 20. Omnis all 21. Us adjective suffix 22. Potens, potentus powerful, 23. Sciences knowing 24. Bubique, everywhere 25. ITY noun suffix 26. Veil farewell 27. L adjective suffix 28. Re again, back 29. 8 verb suffix 30. In in 31. Clam, secretly 32. End adjective suffix 33. Ince noun suffix 